Caddis Maximus here. We got a Bosch 1677M. So the story with the Bosch skill saw is Bosch Parts started partnering with Skill in 1992. Then they ended up buying out Skill Power Tools in 96 and had them for 20 years and then ended up selling them to a Chinese company called Shervon uh, in 2016. Kind of the end of the days of, well, I mean, Skill's still around, but all that new products that they've, the whole revamp was after they were sold to Shervon and Shervon wanted to update all the product lines. In the 90s, as far as I can understand it, um, once Bill, either when, once they started partnering or in 96 when Bosch bought Skill, that Bosch, since they're the buyer, they're the premium brand. So what they did is they had these kind of specialized, these were still 4,400 RPM, but 15 amp versions of the magnesium mag skill saw and different handles, you know, different upper guard. And they continued that for a while while the actual skill saw branded ones were still the USA made ones are still 13 amps. And the reason I say that, and I'm, there are a few people who watch my worm drive videos who really know the details about when what came out when it came to the skill saws but like my 15 amp mag 77 is made in china but all the usa made ones are all 13 amps and so that's what the deal with this is this is a made in usa version that's a also the 15 amp skill saws run at 4600 rpm but this is still the traditional 4400 rpm the deal with these is they're just a skill saw with an extra like quarter horsepower, just a bit of extra power. So Bosch's deal is they went with a straight handle. This is just a standard skill saw casting. If any of these things, the upper, lower blade guards break, the shoe breaks. If the shoe breaks on these magnesium ones, which you can, especially on this thinner side, magnesium's real brittle. It's also real reactive metal. You're going to get corrosion like that on any magnesium tool. Any of that breaks... You just replace it with skill saw ports, parts, and that's really the recommendation with the suit, the foot. If it breaks or just bends, just replace it with one of the steel skill saw ones. We know it's uh, akin to, I believe, a Type 17. There's this extra bolt here, and it was either Type 16 or Type 17 where they added that. It just went to drop. There was just, I guess, over the years, they decided that they need a little bit of extra support. Most skill saws do not have this extra little support. But other than that, you can put on the traditional angled skill saw handle. Skill saws are specifically designed for right-handed people. Most people are right-handed. And they have the handle that's uh, tilted so that you have a straight wrist when you're operating it. What Bosch did was, uh, you know, you to the detriment of right-handed people. It's worse ergonomics because now you have your wrist kind of bent like this when you're looking at the cut line was to make it more usable for left-handed people because at least the handle was straight. And if you're using a traditional skill saw handle, it's like this. And so your left-handed people are kind of like trying to do this with it, which actually is dangerous. And so Bosch went with the straight handle. If you're right-handed, I would just pop this handle off and put on uh, a traditional angled skill saw one this does come with the rafter hook i mean i got this for 50 bucks at a garage sale i'm stoked there's like a following to these uh, american made bosch saws and they go for a lot of money online surprisingly enough and i thought this was in beautiful condition had a bunch of electrical tape and actually the cord isn't what's all torn up what's all torn up is the this 20 year old saw um hell this thing could be 25 almost 30 years old so I'm just going to pop a strain relief on there and figured it would be kind of a two-for-one talking about the saw and doing the uh, strain relief. Of course, we have t 25 so the handle screws. And uh, I think that's what this is. And big old T30s for the primary screws. Fortunately, we only have to take off one half of the handle. This was going to be a video about doing the power cord, and so you can still kind of see how to do the power cord. It's just super simple. You just, uh, skill saw power cords are so common that you, Home Depot used to stock pre made skill saw power cords, uh, blade bolts, and washers, and triggers. They were that common. It's also a good idea to, <clears throat> those can be tight. 
periodically check these back motor screws. Occasionally those have been loose on some saws that I've checked them on. And it's just due to expansion and contraction cycles uh, under heavy duty use. That one's really tight. There. Those things can really, the steel on a magnesium alloy, if you get a little bit of moisture in there, man, that corrosion is just like Loctite. Come on, quit being a, a pill. Why does this, oh, it might help if I remove the final screw. Always love doing that, prying on something and realizing you have one more screw left. There we go, only a moderate amount of dust in there. Traditional skill saw switch. Is that a is that also T25? No, that's gonna be a T20. We do have to disconnect the wires from the trigger. So you need three different sizes: T30, T25, and T20. My bad, and a T15, which is just kind of funny. You need all these sizes. You need T30 for the big bolts, T25 for these bolts, a T20 for the trigger and a T15 for the belt clamp fasteners and the little Torx fasteners for the trigger switch. So many earlier switches have the terminals on the bottom and top and more modern switches they move to back terminals just because it's easier to deal with rather than having them to go have to make a 90 degree turn right inside the back of the handle. And so we'll just pull these off. Anyway, I've been wanting one of these Boshes for a long time. Run into skill saws, of course, quite often, to tell you the truth. Um, heck, in my area, there's two on Craigslist that have had hardly any use. Older models that look brand new, but one person wants like $150. It's just like, wow. And then there's like a pretty beat up one kind of out in the country, and that person just wants 35 bucks. So there's just so many skill saws, but man... Uh, like the Black Craftsman ones or these Bosch ones. I think that's going to be a little bit larger. A lot more coveted. There's just something about having the Bosch worm drive. I do like, the, as I did the thumbnail, I do like that neat uh, worm drive sticker that they have on it. And, uh, you know, it's one of the rare skill saws that is a Made in USA. 15 amp 4400 rpm unit and I disconnected the wrong wires <laughs> Was this unscrewing stuff wasn't even paying attention. Where'd my t15 go? Usually it's like two poles on top two poles on the bottom, but this is like side to side which I think is kind of interesting I was just unscrewing the black wire that was next to it you got to kind of be careful of that because that, you know, you can just use normal skill saw switches with this, but you got to pay attention to which way the poles are switching because obviously if you, you're replacing a switch where it's two on top and like the motor wires on top and the power wires on the bottom and you get that confused with a switch like this and you can end up with a sh uh, either a short and a big spark when you try to plug it in. Or it not working at all. So anyway, we'll do this and muscle on a new strain relief. I don't think I have a genuine skill saw strain relief, but I certainly have something that's gonna work. Uh, this is a Milwaukee. <clears throat> uh, it's a, a little bit of play in there. This Milwaukee one will do just fine for now. And we'll make sure we put this on the correct direction. It's always fun to put that on the wrong way. Other than that, not a lot else to talk about. You know, one of the hardest things to, to find information on is skill. And for a long time, I think since the 1930s, had this dual field motor. I mean, almost all of these brush motors, there's a the field, which is the part that doesn't move, has one winding on one side and one winding on the other. What skill does is they have two concentric, so there's a small winding on top and then another larger diameter winding on top 
same thing on the bottom. And I believe they just simply, it may hurt efficiency some, but what it does is it spreads out the field wires over a wider area. The motor has to be specially wound to deal with that. But it just spreads it out over a wider area and allows better cooling of the field because that's often what can happen is the armature has a lot of air going by it. It's spinning, so it's getting pretty evenly cooled. But the fields, uh, they just have just not quite as much airflow, and they have a high concentration of or high power density and end up overheating. I don't know if there's a you know a trade-off of if you know if you get more torque. Wow, this wire. Oop, I ought to pry out this thing. So this is a modern enough saw where it has the little security tag uh, built right into the tool. And on this, we'll just plant that, get this back in place, and screw that bad boy down. When doing one of these little cord pinches, kind of walk it down a little bit on each side. Oop, make sure you get the strain relief seated. <laughs> seated. And just walk it down a little bit on each side until you get it all the way down. So replacing the power cord on these is, of course, pretty darn easy. Make sure all your wires are relatively in place and put everything back together. I advise actually screwing the two handle halves together first so they're t tight and then the cross bolts into the body you do last. Other than that, that's kind of the infamous, not infamous, but the famous Bosch skill saws for a long time. It was the only one that you could, the only way to get a 15 amp, seven and a quarter inch skill saw. Uh, these are, these screws are a little mushy. I think that's why one of the reasons Skill uses a slightly more brittle plastic in their uh, handles is that the one problem with nylon is, is it is a little bit softer of a plastic and when you have some heavy duty screws like this sometimes just in this situation when they tighten down they don't really get particularly tight they just the in resistance increases some and if you continue to screw them you'll actually either just strip out the threads or actually screw the squish out the plastic on the, the side that you're trying to hold down, so you have to be real careful. Just like that, just not much more, and then that way when you put in these cross bolts, it's all nice and tight, and you don't have to worry about uh, them kind of being, you know, tightening these bolts and being kind of separated some, and then you have even more problems with these regular handle half screws. And there you have a little discussion while I do a little service about the Bosch 15 amp 1677M. I got it plugged into the same light, same circuit as my little overhead lights here. really dims them almost makes them turn off for a second I mean an electric motor like this as soon as you turn it on it's like it's literally just like a short circuit that just is very momentary other than that kind of stoked to have picked this up the old school main USA high torque Bosch worm drive and I'll actually just keep it as it is with the straight handle because there may be cuts that uh, I may need to do left-handed. And it's nice to actually have that straight handle. And once again, it's usually these magnesium sh foot plates that give you the trouble. And you just replace it with the steel shoe. Gain a little bit of weight. You know, one of the big claims is Bosch was an early adopter of these big horn blade guards. The idea is when you're out a 45 degree angle, this extra horn here would help reduce the likelihood that the guard would kind of hit and then get stuck at a point to where you have to hit it with your finger. That's always been kind of an issue. Also, I believe these go, 
Yeah, so this will do a little bit over 45 degrees. This will do a 50 degree bevel, but what they have is they have this little stop, and then you just pull it with your finger if you want to go pat. It's a 45 degree stop. You pull that with your finger, and then you can go the extra 5 degrees. And I guess the only other real change, the difference between the skill saw and this is that they use a plastic lever for the blade guard. And you can just screw in a metal one from a skill, but the skills are stronger in one way. Like if it gets hit on the top or something, this is more likely to break, of course. But the problem with the skills is they're always getting hit on the side and then it gets bent and it's just scraping along the upper blade guard where since this is plastic when you set it down or it gets hit it just kind of flexes over and uh, so I think I'll even keep that and we'll see how long it lasts and of course you have this distinctive they did recast the upper blade guard not just to put in Bosch but since skill saw did their name curve and Bosch's corporate standard is straight across they needed to modify this so they had enough extra space so they could put a big old Bosch logo on it Anyway, thanks for watching my overly uh, verbaceous video uh, about the 15 amp, 4400 RPM Bosch, American made Bosch skill saw. And just to leave, leave you with a couple tips. Uh, one, when you're checking out old skill saws, make sure the blade. It, the steep helix angle in the worm drive so you some worm drives you can't turn backwards i.e. turn the output and make the input turn on skill saws you can and it should be nice and smooth and actually pretty easy to do secondly check the gear the blade backlash this is really tight so i've seen one and you may run in the ones where you do that with the blade and it's like the tooth moves a quarter inch or even three eighths of an inch that indicates a lot of heavy gear wear and i'd pass on it and then the other things you just look for, wear points, you know, it'll get all, depending on how much it's been used, it'll get a beat up on the top of the guard there, get a beat up on the bottom and on this inside edge of the lower blade guard. And this has a rafter hook, which kind of protects the side, so you just see if it's really been beat in. When they don't have rafter hooks, uh, you just look on how beat the gear case is here and the side of it. And of course, you have huge vents, so you can just see in the light, see how worn the commutator looks otherwise i'm still kind of stoked to add this to my worm drive collection because it's the american made 15 amp 4400 rpm skill saw back handle is not my favorite i think i still prefer the traditional skill but the straight handle will be nice just in situations where uh, i may need it may be safer to do the cut left hand and it's nice to have a handle that will accommodate that versus a traditional skill saw handle. Anyway, see you next time.